So in order to set us up for uh, doing uh, some Tableau analysis with MATLAB, I want to first um, think about this problem from a Tableau perspective and in particular exploit some of the revised simplex ideas. So what we just figured out was that for this problem of optimizing 3x plus y, subject to these constraints, we sort of graphically thought about it and found that this point is the optimum, right? And I'm going to take it as a given that I know where the optimum is for these initial uh, conditions. But I want to take just a minute to, to sort of tie back to revise simplex things and actually write out the tableau for this to, to think through it. So my initial tableau will be at this location, right? And I can actually go through and define my slack variable. So let's say that slack variable 1 measures how far I in, am in from the y equals 3 constraint. Slack variable 2 measures how far I am from the x plus y equals 6 constraint. And slack variable 3 is going to measure how far in I am from the x equals 4 constraint. With those um, definitions of the slack variables, I can pretty easily write out my tableau. Right? So I'm going to have a column for x, a column for y, a column for slack 1, slack 2, slack 3, and slack 4, which will correspond to what the uh, value of the, of the objective function is. And then finally, my right-hand side column. So, and of course, my rows of the tableau correspond to the constraints and to the uh, objective function. So my first row will correspond to my first constraint of y being less than or equal to 3. So I'll have 0 for x, 1 for y, 1 for s1, 0, 0, 0, and my right-hand side is 3, right? Which is saying that y plus s1 has to be less than or equal, it has to be equal to 3, so since s1 is positive, that enforces the constraint that y is less than or equal to 3. Uh, my second row of the tableau will be a 1 for x, a 0 for y, a 0 for s1, a 1 for s2, 0, 0, 4. My third row of the tableau will be 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 6. And my final row of the tableau will correspond to the objective function. With the objective function, I, of course, want to make that objective function as large as possible and that ends up giving me the negative 3 there, negative 1, and then the slack variable S4 has a 1 that corresponds to, uh, to the objective function. And of course, the right-hand side is 0 at this initial starting point. Okay? So this is my initial tableau T0. Right? I could actually write that simply as a matrix, as an augmented matrix, if I wanted to. Um, now, you recall that for the revised simplex, the sort of idea is that you can calculate your new tableau from your initial tableau by basically doing a coordinate transformation. So let's think about how we would actually just immediately jump to what the tableau is for this optimum point. For this optimum point, my two independent variables are S3 and S2, right? And so in other words, X1 has, X has become a dependent variable, and also Y has become a dependent variable, and S1 and S4 have stayed dependent variables. So that means that it ought to be the case that um, the matrix P times my final tableau must be my initial tableau, where P is the, is the um, transformation matrix that corresponds to the various columns associated with my um, dependent variables. So I'll have the column associated with X as the first column of P, the column associated with y is the second column of p. The column associated with s3 as the third column of p. Oh, sorry, not s3. s1 is the third column of p because my two my two deep independent variables are s2 and s3. So s1 is a dependent variable. So I need to actually pick up my s1 column. So one zero zero zero, and then finally I need to pick up my s4 column of zero 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 one. Right. So this is the matrix that takes my final tableau and transforms it back to my original tableau. Of course, what I actually want to find is my final tableau, so I have to solve this, this linear equation. Right? And uh, I could certainly do that by hand if I had a lot of time and was willing to make a lot of stupid algebra mistakes. But instead of doing it by hand, let's just go into MATLAB and do it straight away. So I'm first going to define my initial tableau. Here's my initial tableau, which we just uh, walked through. I hope this is the same. So I've got a first row that has 1y plus 1 times s1 is equal to 3, 1x plus um, 1y plus, uh, oh, I reversed these, crap. Let's uh, get it right. So we'll make this consistent with what we actually have on the paper. 
So my second column corresponds to 1x plus 0y plus 0s1 plus 1s2 plus 0 plus 0 s3 plus 0 s4 equals 4. My fourth, my third row, 1x plus 1y plus 1 times s3 plus 0 times s4 is equal to 6. And my fourth row, negative 1x plus negative 1y plus s4 is equal to 0. So there's the correct tableau that I believe corresponds to one that's written down in the paper. It does indeed appear to correspond to the one that's written on the paper. Now let's um, calculate the matrix P, right? And the matrix P is simply going to be the first column, because that's one of the, the things that I want to turn into a dependent variable. The second column, that corresponds to Y, which I want to make dependent. The third column, which corresponds to S1, which is going to remain a dependent variable. And finally, S4 will remain a dependent variable. So there's the matrix P. And then finally, I can simply do a lin solve of um, P and T0 in order to find that final tableau, right? So let's say TF is equal to that. And there is my final tableau. And let's just take a minute to look at that tableau. Uh, one of the things that you will note in the tableau is that the final row is all positive, which is good. That means that we've gotten to a point where there's no direction we can move in that will actually give us um, an increase in the objective function. Uh, the second thing we can see in the bottom row is that when we set our two independent variables, that is S3 and S, um, sorry, S3 and S2, yeah, S2 and S3, to be 0, S4 ends up being 14. So 14 should be the value of the objective function at that point. So 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. And that is indeed the value of the objective function at that point. So that makes sense. Um, so certainly this tableau it does correspond to that final point. Notice that we've gotten to that tableau immediately by just knowing which intersection we're looking at. Okay. So now what we could do is start to ask the question, well, what would happen um, if instead of actually um, having this objective function, we had some other objective function? So instead of having a 3 here for the optimization, let's, let's actually try an objective function that's got c times x plus y. Okay. And what's that going to change? Well, in my initial tableau, pretty clearly that's going to change this negative 3 is going to become a negative c, right? And by the same token in this matrix P, that negative 3 is going to become a negative c. So let's go ahead and use math, MATLAB symbolic um, toolbox for that. So we'll make c be symbolic. And now we're going to define our initial tableau. But instead of that negative 3, we're going to put a negative c in there, right? So there's my initial tableau. My um, matrix P, I can again just pull out the respective columns. There's my matrix P. And finally, um, I can again calculate what the final tableau is, but now it's gonna be, this is going to be a symbolic calculation. Um, and now we can see some interesting stuff in here, right? My final tableau has, first of all, um, C showing up in two places. One place that it shows up is in the column that corresponds to um, S2. And that column, if C becomes too small, this becomes negative, right? And in fact, if C becomes less than 1, this becomes negative. So the fact that C has to be greater than 1 in order for this to be positive tells you that the only time that this optimum is legitimate is so long as C is greater than 1. In other words, going back to the, the math here, right, this objective function, if C is greater than 1, you've got a slope that is greater than 1. And because you've got a slope or a slope that's where the magnitude is greater than 1, and since that slope's magnitude is greater than 1, you hit this point, right? When c becomes less than 1, you actually hit this point first, right? So the tableau here is actually telling us what the range of values are that are legitimate with regard to this being the optimum. One, of, one thing that is, is a consideration is that C has to be greater than 1. And in fact, that's the only consideration for making this be an optimum because that's the only place in this lower row where we're going to get a negative number. The other thing we can see is that actually the value of the objective function changes 
as c changes and in particular the value of the objective function goes up by a factor of four for each change of c by a, for each unit change in c you get an additional four out of your um out of your objective function and again that actually makes a great deal of sense because of the fact that what's happening here is that your objective function um, is proportional to x with a proportionality constant of c but this optimum is located at the point x equals 4. so since the optimum is located at the x equals 4 whatever you change c by leads to an increase in the objective function of 4 times c okay. so as you can see looking at this tableau gives us a fair amount of insight into what's going on so 